Pedro, you read in popular science now that the universe has only 4% of it is the stuff that we really know, atoms and uh, molecules, and 25% uh, is so-called dark matter, and approximately 70% is so-called dark energy. And, and these numbers are just repeated as a mantra. Um, how, how do you know that? We know the makeup of the universe because we make very precise measurements of effectively the expansion rate of the universe. And so the line, the, the, you know, the line of reasoning, the logic is as yeah. follows. We, we, we basically we map out the universe, we look at the distribution of galaxies, we look at distant objects. By looking at these objects we can kind of figure out how fast the universe is expanding at different moments in time. Now, Einstein's theory tells us that the dynamics of space-time is driven by stuff, by what kind of stuff there is in it. And the, the precise details of how the universe expands depends exactly on the precise details of what the universe is made of. So if we measure the expansion uh, rate of the universe, we can measure the, what the universe is made, of, uh, made out of over, as a function of time. And that lets us infer what, you know, what these things are. And so we know that, for example, dark matter behaves in a certain way and atoms behave in a different way and dark energy behaves in a completely different way and only the right cocktail of these things gives us the expansion rate of the universe as we perceive it. So, so let's just start with what we, we have in the beginning. Now we, we have an expanding universe and com the current theory is that inflation in the very very early stages within the first micro 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 second drove it and it started the expansion and then Theoretically, the amount of stuff that, that cascaded out from the end of the, the uh, period of inflation, um, all of that stuff will have a gravitational effect that would tend to slow. So you have these two different forces. So between the, the expansion rate that you measure and the estimate of the, of the stuff, you can then articulate what that stuff has to be, something like that? It's basically that. It's, it's, um, so the universe has this history, you know, it began in a certain mm. way, which we're not completely sure of, and it's been expanding and it's full of stuff. The kind of the intuition is that stuff slows the expansion right. down. Just kind of our, of gravity. Because of gravity, you know, this, this whole, you know, we have this intuition that, you know, gravity gravitates and so we'll pull things <laughs> back. Um, so we, we've always expected that the universe was expanding but slowing down because stuff is pulling it back. And indeed, if we look sufficiently far back in time, you know, we do see that that's happening. But if at some point in, in our past, the universe started to speed up, so the expansion of the universe started to speed up, and we can't explain that in terms of the usual stuff, you know. This tables don't slow the universe it's down. the opposite. Or the opposite, it, it's exactly. We need something that speeds it up. And so that's when people started talking about dark energy. There's, there's the, simplest, the simplest explanation for dark energy, the simplest you know, placeholder is something called the cosmological constant, which Einstein proposed you know, very shortly after he came up with his theory. Um, but we now think more generally that Because Einstein believed initially that the universe was static and his theory seemed to indicate that it was expanding, which he didn't, which we didn't know at the time. Basically, he needed to, you know, he needed to, he, Einstein had this idea that the universe was static. He had this prejudice that the universe was static. And so... Um, which was it, common at the time. Which was common at the time. And so if, if the universe is full of stuff that makes it want to pull it back, he needed to put something that would push it out, and it was this cosmological constant, uh, which is a perfectly natural thing to put right. in his equations. Well, the cosmological constant has come back because now we see that the universe is expanding, is, is speeding up, and people think that it's, a lot of people think it's a cosmological yeah. constant, but more generally we think there's something there mm. that's making it do that. And so that's the dark side of the universe is trying to understand not only the dark matter that we have, you know, the stuff which isn't atoms that slows it down, but as importantly, the stuff that's making it speed Now, dark up. matter originated not in the expansion of the universe as much as the, the rotation of, uh, uh, and speed of, of stars within galaxies themselves because they, they were rotating faster than they should with what you were able to see, something like that, right? Basically, the idea is that when, when people started to look in more detail at galaxies, you know, you look at galaxies and they're, they're this agglomeration of stars. And um, they looked at them and they're this very well-defined things, these spiral things that are rotating. Um, it wasn't clear why they were rotating so fast. As you moved out, why were they rotating so fast? If you added up all the gravitational pull of the stars, it just wasn't enough to rein in the stars yeah. on the outskirts. <laughs> yeah. um, and so people said, well, actually, there's got to be something which gravitates, which pulls, and these stars are kind of sitting in these blocks of stuff, this dark matter which gravitates. Mm. 
Um, and so that was, you know, originally mm -hmm. that was one of the things that led people to, to, to think that there's got to be more out there than just the stars and galaxies. There's got to be dark matter. What's your confidence level that dark matter uh, and dark energy, number one, are real, and number two, are approximately in the, uh, the ratios that are currently given? Um, so there are, the, 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 there are two different questions. One is, right. we have this description of the universe in terms of dark matter and dark energy. A math, you know, let's, let's, let's just say that it's a mathematical description with some physical overtones, okay? Right. I think it's a really good description, okay? Um, am I completely sure that that's the correct description? Well, I'm finding it harder and harder to come hmm. up with an alternative to dark matter. And I've worked on alternatives to dark matter. You know, I've looked at alternatives where we say that we actually get gravity wrong on those scales, and, and I, I just find it harder and harder. But it's that's just a, that's just an intuition. You know, it's not a, it's it's a, it, it doesn't even rate as a belief. Okay. With regards to dark energy, I have no idea. I'm a complete agnostic. I have no idea what the physical explanation for it. I, some of my colleagues are, you know, really evangelically pro cosmological constant. I have no idea. And the reason I have no idea is that we basically, we're taking Einstein's theory of general relativity and we're doing this huge extrapolation from where we've mm. measured it incredibly well on the scale of solar system, pulsars, you know, which is very astrophysical, to um, cosmological scales, which are many, many, many orders of magnitude larger than, 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 uh, than, than where we've actually constrained it. So I have no idea. I really have no idea what the fundamental reason, the, the, the statement is, I have no idea the fundamental reason why the universe seems to be accelerating today.